Hey guys, how are you today? Hopefully you have a wonderful week like always because today I'm continuing with my Aaliyah discography journey and we have made it to our second studio album from 1996. 25 years ago? It just clicked in my head, 1996. 25 years ago, is that right? I'm horrible at math. 10, 20, I think that's right. Okay, um, One in a Million, her second studio album. Now, a month ago, I did listen to her third studio album, her self-titled, called Aaliyah. That was my first time being exposed to Aaliyah's music, and I quite enjoy myself. That album, in my opinion, was... it was wonderful. Now, there are 18 tracks on the album. The album is 1 hour and 18 minutes. I don't recall hearing any of these songs before, and that's pretty much all I have to say right now, so let's jump right into the album with track 1. Beats for the Streets, the intro. Is that Missy Elliott? I like that part. And that was tracks one and two, Beats for the Streets intro and Hot Like Fire. This is steamy. Is it hot in here or is it just Aaliyah? First and foremost, I have to compliment the production, the beats, Tibbalad. I think, yes, Tibbalad is, of course, a producer on this album, and just Eargasm Central. For me, anyway, I highly enjoy the production on this album so far. It's so steamy and sultry and sensual, and it's throbbing. It's like thrusting. It's... <laughs> I can't even explain myself. You just want to thrust your pelvis continuously. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing under the table right now. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Hot like fire, indeed. Now, Missy Elliott makes an appearance on this album, in particular on track one, Beats for the Streets. Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Wake up. Creeping through the fog. Who's that, y'all? A-A-L-I-Y-A-H. And then on track two, Aaliyah is saying, I'ma make it hot like fire. Kaboom. You're hotter than a summer day in California. You got me melted like a Sunday, and I want ya. I know you've been waiting. You've been waiting for a long time for me. But if you wait a little while longer, this is how it be. It's gonna be hot like fire. I like the part where she goes, kiss, kiss, and kiss, and kiss, and kiss. This had to have been a single. It had to have been. And it was. It was the fifth single. Musically, the song has a Jeep-friendly, bouncy beat, and it also features ad-libs from Timbaland. Lyrically, the song is very suggestive, with Aaliyah promising that she is worth the wait, and that it will be worth it if her potential lover waits until 
she is ready. Woo! It's steamy, Elia. <sighs> okay, I don't know what's happening in this video, and we just started. <gasps> Ooh, I feel so good. I am just a hot mess right now. <laughs> now, I typically don't listen to remixes in these videos, just because I feel like it's something you guys generally don't want to see me listening to the same song again, even though it is a remix. But because I enjoyed this song so much, track 18, Hot Like This, Timbaland's Groove Mix featuring Missy Elliott and Timbaland. This is a bonus track and I'm gonna check it out right now. <laughs> Yes! Okay, so this is just as hot as the original version, track two. I don't really have a preference for which one I like more. I would gladly listen to either or. But anyway, let's move on to track three, one in a million. <laughs> And that was track three, one in a million. This is a sexy album. It's so sensual. I wasn't expecting this album to be so sultry and just, it's filled with desire and just, it's so smooth and I can't even explain myself this. This is very sexy, Aaliyah. Between me and you, I feel chemistry. I won't let no one come and take your place. Cause the love you give, it can't be replaced. No one else loved me like you do. That's why I don't mind to spend my life with you. I want to please you in any way I can. I want to share my world. Don't you understand? Your love is a one in a million. It goes on. Now, obviously, this also had to have been a single. And it was. It was the third single from the album. I don't know which track I prefer more. I don't know if I prefer Hot Like Fire more or One in a Million. I think I like both of them equally. <sighs> Lyrically, the song is about Aaliyah professing her love for a guy that she identifies as being her one in a million. In regards to Aaliyah liking the song, Missy Elliott said that Aaliyah had an ear and she knew what that music made her feel like. She was next level to understand that this is some next level music. This is not just the sound that's going on right now. This is a new sound that is being created. This whole movement is new. This track definitely is a grower. Initially, the first minute or so, minute and a half, I didn't really know what to make of it. And I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but then towards the middle and then towards the end, it really grew on me and it is quite catchy. I like the hook and it's just, 
it's hot. <laughs> so we are gonna move on to track four, A Girl Like You, and this is featuring Treach. And that was track four, A Girl Like You, and this is another solid track on the album. I do prefer tracks two and three over this one, Hot Like Fire and One in a Million, but I do think this is a great continuation of the album. Once again, the production was fire, and I liked Treach in the song as well, and overall, I thought this was a good song. It's definitely a head bopper. I Could Touch Ya, You Kiss Me Right, Be Your Lover Undercover, Get A Woman Wet, I Wanna Get To Know A Little More About You, and Then You Smile, Our Love Is Pouring Down. Like there ain't no tomorrow. I mean, she uses words like pouring and wet and melts and just very sensual lyrics. I also liked the use of the saxophone in the song. But anyway, let's move on to track five. If your girl only knew. And that was track 5, If Your Girl Only Knew, and this is another solid song on the album. I will say we are 5 tracks in, and this is a very cohesive and consistent album. I did enjoy listening to the song for the first time, but this really wouldn't be a song I would typically listen to again. If your girl only knew that you was trying to get with me, what would she do? If your girl only knew that you was dissing her to talk to me, she would probably leave you alone. I bet she'd be glad that you was gone and that she wouldn't have to worry if your girl only knew. So this guy is being sleazy. He's talking to Aaliyah and trying to get with Aaliyah when he already has a girl. And if she only knew, if she only knew what her man was doing, she would drop his ass. I also like how Aaliyah isn't giving into this guy. She's not giving into this guy's temptations, and she's saying that poor girl if she only knew, so you're not gonna get with me. Girl is dumb to put up with you, I won't be no fool. Bet you like what you see, it ain't easy to get with me. Lyrically, the song is about a girl criticizing the man for hitting on her when he already has a girlfriend. This was released as the lead single from the album, but we are gonna move on to track six, Choosy Lover, 
old school, new school. And that was track six, Choosy Lover, Old School, New School. Yes, this is my jam. I definitely prefer this track over the last couple tracks I listened to. The synths and the electric guitar, I mean, the production on this track. Honestly, one of my favorite songs so far on the album. I definitely prefer the old school portion of the song over the new school portion towards the end. I honestly didn't like the new school part the last couple minutes or so, the last few minutes. So that part I won't listen to again because it didn't really... I wasn't really drawn into that part, but the old school part of Choosy Lover, the first five minutes or so, now that part was great. Now this is a cover of the 1983 song by the Isley Brothers, originally titled Juicy Lover. The old school portion of Aaliyah's version closely resembles the original version from the Isley Brothers before transitioning into the new school section, which features more of a hip-hop beat and feel to match the contemporary feel of the rest of the album. Now, for me, that part wasn't anywhere near as memorable as the old school portion. I get why they did it. I understand the logic between old school and new school. The old school hip-hop and R&B meeting the new school. So I like that transition to an extent. I just, I wasn't the biggest fan of the new school portion. I'll make you so happy because you've given me security. You've proven what you said. Never worry about you jumping in and out of bed. Choosy lover, boy, I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad you chose me, baby. I'll make you so happy. Another great song on the album, and I highly enjoyed myself. But anyway, let's move on to track seven, Got to Give It Up, featuring Slick Rick. Yeah, Bob Taylor, can I get a Hennessy on the rocks and uh, Long Island nice tea thing? Like, everyone was chasing my fun ass. But when the layer walked in, the whole place went bananas. Sign this thousand dollar book from the layer.
4,000 and hand up. Why are you a jerk? You're so short sure now. And that was track seven, Got to Give It Up. And this is so much fun to listen to. It's a party song, it's a sexy song, it gets your body moving, and I like the beats. I liked Slick Rick, obviously. Um, it's just a good time. I used to go out to parties and stand around because I was too nervous to really get down, but my body yearned to be free. I want off on the floor so somebody would choose me. No more standing upside the wall. Now I got myself together, baby, and I'm having a ball. Long as you're grooving, there's always a chance. Somebody watching might want to make romance. Move your body, baby, and dance all night. Now it looks like this is another cover on the album. The song was originally recorded by Marvin Gaye in 1977. I do think that this track in particular is the most dance-oriented song on the album so far. Lyrically, the song is about finding a man in a dance club, ordering alcohol. Aaliyah's version of the song features a sample from Michael Jackson's song, Billie Jean. Oh. Oh, yes, I can hear it. I would never have known. <laughs> Aaliyah decided to record Got To Give It Up because she wanted to have party songs on the album, and I agree. Good job, Aaliyah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only one, but I was getting beach party vibes from this track, and it just makes you want to move your body, move it and groove it and jive it, and it's just a great time. Essentially, Aaliyah is confessing that typically she's a wallflower, she doesn't really dance, and she's nervous to dance, so she typically stands up against the wall and just watches everyone else dance. So now she's moving her body and she's having a great time. This is such a live party. So let's move on to track eight, four page letter. Yeah, turn my music up. Okay. Up some more. Oh? Up some more. Oh, okay, now you're being greedy. Up a little bit more. Girl! Mama always told me to be careful. I always had And that was track eight, four page letter. And this is a really sweet song on the album. I always had my eyes on this one particular guy. I was too shy, so I decided to write. I'm sending him a four page letter and I closed it with a kiss. And when I write him, he better get it on time. I'm sending him a four page letter and I closed it with a kiss. One thing I am coming to realize about Aaliyah is she did seem to be a very shy girl. She does sing about being a wallflower on track seven, Got to Give It Up. And now on this track, track eight, she say how she has always been a shy person. And so she can't 
tell this person face to face how she really feels. So she has to write what she feels in a four page letter and she seals it with a kiss. I wasn't the biggest fan of this song. I probably wouldn't listen to it again. It's just not really my cup of tea. And I did think the song dragged a bit longer than it needed to. Now it looks like I might be in the minority when it comes to me not being the biggest fan of this track because it looks like a lot of people have praised this song as being one of her best ballads in her entire discography. And a lot of people complimented her voice as well, which is wonderful on this track. But for me anyway, it just didn't really connect. But anyway, let's move on to track nine. Everything's gonna be all right. Hey, yo, Rodney, you ready? Cause I'm ready. So let's go. And that was track 9, Everything's Gonna Be Alright. And this is, in my opinion, this is a solid track on the album. It's not one of my favorites, and um, I think it's okay. I mean, it's not really particularly memorable for me anyway. I did like the production. For me, that was the highlight. Everything's Gonna Be Alright. Let's get this on tonight. It's time to get real loose. Do what you want to do, everything's gonna be alright. And she kind of just repeats that part over and over and over again. <laughs> so yeah, it's a cute song, but I wouldn't really listen to it again. But anyway, let's move on to track 10, Giving You More. I like that part. And that was track 10, Giving You More. And of course, I really enjoyed the beats. And I did kind of enjoy the chorus. I did like the melody. Um, I think it's another decent song on the album. I would maybe listen to it again. Her vocals are quite sensual on this track. Not just this track, but the entire album. I want to be the one that's giving you more. All that you need, all that you want. I want to be the one that's giving you more. My love is right here for you. I'm down to give you every part of me. Can't you see? So the lyrics are nothing to really write home about. But at the end of the day, I think this is an okay song. So we are going to move on to track 11, I Got You Back. <laughs> Stop it. Do unto me as I do, and everything will be good. Remember that I'm by your 
And that was track 11, I Got Your Back. And this is another nice inclusion on the album. And I will say, I mean, I said it already, but I'm going to say it again. This is a very cohesive and consistent album. Even though I think some of these songs can drag on and on and on for quite a while. That's one thing I like about this song in particular, I Got Your Back. It's under three minutes. It doesn't keep dragging on and on and up till the five minute mark like some of these songs do. I bet the women always wonder how I keep my man. They've been trying for so long and still don't understand. It's not the things I say, it's the way I say it that keeps him locked down, nowhere to go. And on top of that, I let him know I'm down for whatever, no matter how you act. You never have to worry about a thing, I got your back. When no one else is there, with me, you can chill, cause it feels real good. When you know somebody's got your back. So lyrically, I really do like the song and what she's singing about. But anyway, let's move on to track 12, Never Give It Up, featuring Tavarius Polk. <laughs> And that was track 12, Never Give It Up, and I unfortunately gave up on this song halfway through. I essentially didn't like anything about this song. I also thought the vocals were quite questionable. I'll never forgive you for giving your love away, I gotta keep it to myself, no. If you say what you think, and you mean what you say, my love, my love will always be here, always. And then she goes on to say, Lately, I've had the strangest feeling, a feeling I can't deny, that angels watching over us and our love. Angels watching over you, over me. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, I gotta say, definitely, I mean, this is probably one of my least favorite songs on the album. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I will not be going back to this song. <laughs> but let's move on to track 13, Heartbroken. So that was track 13, Heartbroken, and I feel bad for not even being able to finish the song. I don't usually do that, but I just, I couldn't finish the song. It's so painfully boring. I'm tired of my heart being broken. I'm tired of these tears falling down my face. I'm tired of this love being taken for granted. Won't you go your way? I'm tired of my heart being broken. So... Obviously, the lyrics are quite sentimental, they're quite powerful, and she's tired of getting her heart broken, and she's tired of these tears falling down her face. So I feel bad for not being able to finish the song, because you can tell that, obviously, there's a lot going on in this song. 
is very meaningful, but it's just boring. I'm not gonna fake being interested in this song because I'm not. I think one of the problems of this album is there's so many tracks. There's 18 tracks on this album, and it's quite long. It's 1 hour and 18 minutes. So because of that... This album does drag quite a bit in parts. For example, this song, Heartbroken, this track doesn't warrant being over four minutes. Now, I don't know if I'm the only one, maybe a lot of you like this song, but for me, it's just painfully boring to listen to. So let's move on to track 14, Never Coming Back. Hey, I do it out there tonight. Oh, hi. I love you too. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna break it down for the fellas that don't know that they can break women's heart. All in love, all for you. Things that I do. All in love, all in love. I was so young, but I won't go up. I still remember the pain you gave me. And that was track 14, Never Coming Back. And this is a fun song filled with personality. She's speaking to the listener and um, some candid moments of her talking to us. And it was a lot of fun. I once was young, but I'm all grown up. And I know about love and used to love you. You tried to play me and then persuade me. I still remember the pain you gave me. I can't believe you. I gotta leave you. I'm packing up. And you can hit the road, Jack. You can take these things, things that you gave me, because I'm never coming back. So I do like the message of the song. She's grown now. She knows a lot more now. And you can't do to me what you already did. What you did to me, you can't do that again. So the pain you gave me, I can't believe you. I gotta leave you. So you can pack your things. You can hit the road. You can take these things, things you gave me, because I'm never coming back. Buh bye So I did like that aspect of the song, but unfortunately this, again, wouldn't really be a song I would listen to again. But anyway, let's move on to track 15, Ladies in the House, featuring Missy Elliott and Timbaland. <laughs> And that was track 15, Ladies in the House, and a fun song, kind of, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, this is another song that I could really get into. If my lady's in the house tonight, let me hear you say hey. If my fella's in the house tonight, let me hear you say hey. I think my favorite part of the entire song was Missy Elliott, and that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, another song I wouldn't really listen to again. And I will say, I am a little disappointed in this second half of the album. But let's move on to track 16, the one I gave my heart to. How could you please 
And that was track 16, the one I gave my heart to. And this song was written by Diane Warren. I really do like the lyrics of the song. How could the one I gave my heart to break my heart so bad? How could the one who made me happy make me feel so sad? This song, just listening to it and reading the lyrics, it is quite tragic. If you love me, how could you hurt me like that? How could the one I gave my world to throw my world away? So lyrically, I do think this is one of the strongest songs on the album. I personally thought, though, that the song was... Even though lyrically and story-wise, it's a beautiful song, I just found it boring. Lyrically, the song is about the protagonist asking how could the person that she loved and gave her heart to break her heart badly. Now, this was selected as one of the singles from the album, I believe, and it actually did pretty well. It reached number 9 on the US Billboard Hot 100. So a lot of people, it looks like enjoyed it, but this definitely wouldn't be a song I would listen to again. And that was track 17, the outro. Came to Give Love, featuring Timbaland. It's a short, sweet outro where she's professing that she came to spread her love to the fans across the world. Reach out to you, touch the hearts of boys and girls. I came to spread my love. So this was a really sweet way to wrap up the album. And that was all 18 tracks of One in a Million by Aaliyah. And this is a good album from Aaliyah. I was disappointed in the second half of the album. I thought the first half was quite wonderful. The production, Timbaland's beats, and Missy Elliott also, her inclusion on quite a few of these tracks. She also co-wrote some of these songs also. And I thought the first half was fire. And her vocals, I mean, the first half was quite sexy and sultry and sensual. It was hot, steamy. She's singing about love and falling in love, being shy and being a wallflower and writing a four-page letter to her lover and sealing it with a kiss. It's very lovey-dovey. But she also sings about the flip side of love, which is heartbreak. More so on the second half, cheating and... This guy breaking her heart and tears running down her face. So it's quite emotional on the second half of the album. I did think the second half of the album was a little boring. And a lot of these songs just kind of dragged on and on and on. I also enjoyed Aaliyah's vocals on this album. They are very playful and her vocals are just... What's the word? Just playful, I guess. That's the best word I can use to describe her vocals. Sexy at times, and sultry, and beautiful to listen to. I did think the lyrics were quite mediocre. They were nothing to really write home about. They're very standard and typical lyrics. I did have high hopes for this album when I listened to the first half, but then towards the middle and then the end, I was left... A little disappointed. I do think her next album, Aaliyah from 2001, is stronger as a whole. But I will say there are still quite a few memorable hits on this album, in particular on the first half, and there are still songs on here that I would gladly go back to. And I do want to go back to track 6, Choosy Lover, because that is definitely one of my favorite tracks. One other thing I didn't enjoy about this album is how long it is. I don't mind long albums with a long track list occasionally. I typically like shorter albums, not necessarily under 10 tracks, but I do like around 12, 13 tracks, roughly. I think 15 is the maximum that I can handle for an album, and then once we start hitting 17, 18 tracks, it gets a bit tiresome. So what did you guys think of the album and what are your impressions? Now it looks like we're going backwards in this discography journey. I started with her 
last and latest album from 2001, Aaliyah. And then we moved backwards to One in a Million. And now we're moving further backwards in time to her debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, her debut album from 1994. Now, obviously, this album seems to be quite controversial. Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. R. Kelly produced it. We all know the story behind what happened there. And so it's going to be very interesting for me to listen to this album for the first time. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, you can message me, you can say, hey, how are you? And I'll see you next time. Take care.